I'm a 23-year-old guy living in a pretty safe neighborhood. I usually make it a point to lock my doors, but last night, I apparently forgot, not long after taking my dogs out for the last time and turning off the TV and lights, one of my dogs started growling. This wasn't too unusual since he sometimes reacts that way when specific people walk by the house. He doesn't bark at everyone. I heard the front door open, and someone walked in. My dog started barking, and my other dog, who loves everyone, came running from the other room to greet our unexpected guest, simultaneously, as I processed what was happening, I exclaimed, what the heck? Who are you? In the hallway stood a guy in his mid to late twenties. Skinny and tall. Um, oh wait. I don't think I'm in the right place, he said, genuinely confused. I responded with, hell no, you aren't. Please get out, he apologized, explaining that he was coming to hang out with a friend but accidentally went to the wrong place. I asked him the house number he was looking for, and it turned out to be just a couple of numbers off from mine. He apologized again and left. He seemed nice and non-threatening, but I was still kind of spooked, the next morning, ready to laugh the whole thing off, I planned to tell my neighbors, a couple in their thirties, about the incident. Though I don't know them well, we've chatted before. Luckily, I caught one of them when I was taking my dogs out. Not wanting to seem mad or scared, I casually said, I'm sure he told you about it, but your friend paid me a surprise visit last night. My neighbor gave me a confused look and said, what are you talking about, your friend, I explained. He walked into my house last night, thinking it was your place, my neighbor was quiet for a moment and then said, I don't want to alarm you, but I have no idea what you're talking about. We didn't have a friend over last night. Okay, so my brother is really creepy. We have about a three-year age gap. When we were younger, he used to scare the life out of me. My parents used to think it was just kids being kids, but as we got older, it got worse. He used to walk out of the kitchen with a knife and just stare at me with it. My parents would never believe it when I said something. As we continued to grow older, he became more violent. He used to try to fight me, but it wasn't just play fighting, there were actual punches and kicks involved. Since I was smaller, I would come out with bruises. Eventually, he grew more, touchy, brushing up against me just to touch my lower back. At first, I thought it was an accident. But he kept going lower. Eventually, I caught on that it wasn't an accident. I always told him to stop, but he didn't. So, I started yelling at him to stop. He did for a while, but still, here and there, he would do it, recently, about two months ago when I turned 18, I found a hidden camera in my bathroom. I instantly knew it was his. I took it, removed the SD card, and placed the SD card in my lockbox, hiding the camera in my room. Two days later, the camera was gone from my room, but I still have the SD card. About a month later, there was this new clock in the bathroom, and I thought my mom bought it. I checked it for cameras and didn't see any on the clock, but as a precaution. I always had it covered or unplugged. Last week, I found the old camera replaced with a new one. Today, I asked my mom if she bought the clock for the bathroom, and she said she thought I bought it. Right away, I checked it for a camera and found one. That's not the only weird thing, at night, he paces up and down our hallway for about a minute. Sometimes he knocks on my door or just stares at me when I'm not in my room. Right now, I am in the process of sweeping my room for cameras because I still have no idea how he found that camera I hid in my room, which really freaks me out. I have no idea what to do. I know I should probably tell my mom, but he gives me serial killer vibes. However, I am also saving to get my own apartment, so hopefully, I can do that and just avoid him. I'm 24 years old female. This is a bit hard for me to write out, but I think it's important to address, so my parents split when I was young. Neither my dad nor my mom had their act together, 
which, in turn, caused me to not have my act together. From a young age, I was drinking and experimenting with recreational drugs. I was just falling into a cycle that my family has always been in, my mother had a tendency to sleep around with anyone that would give her the time of day. This meant inviting some really creepy guys into our home. I think it's important to mention that she was a drug addict and didn't consider the danger, I had been arrested a few times before the age of 15 for either fighting or underage drinking. I was a mess. One night, my mom and her occasional boyfriend were waiting up when I stumbled and drunk. This was the moment I realized I needed a change, my mom's boyfriend had pushed me down and then pulled me into another room of the house. My mom started banging on the door, begging him to let me go, to this day, I still won't forget that sinister look on his face. It gives me chills, just thinking about it. It was the face of someone who had bad intentions. It was a little smile, and I swear it's burned into my brain. He said something along the lines of I'm about to show you why it's bad to let your mom worry about you, I screamed. He kept coming at me, but I put up a fight. After a couple of minutes of struggle, I scratched him in the face. Then he became enraged. Thankfully, my mom had phoned the police, and he was arrested before anything serious happened, there was a cop that was always present when I got in trouble. He was around 60 at the time. I remember he was always giving me shit for my behavior. That night he was there. My mom was taken into custody along with her boyfriend, so I was sitting and waiting with him while they were getting my story. Then he said something to me I'll never forget. I'm really sorry about all of this. I'm sorry, but you're not going home. And then he told me, it's time for you to change. Do you want to end up like her, or do you want to be somebody? I told him that I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to break that cycle. I was put into foster care, which was a horrible experience at first, but it ended up being what I needed. He and I stayed friends until he passed away about a year ago. I always went to him when I needed guidance, I'm happy to say that I've been a corrections officer for the past two years because of him, and I'm pleased to honor his memory by pursuing a career in law enforcement. Also, losing me was what my mom needed to get her act together. She has been sober for almost 10 years and is remarried to a wonderful guy, hopefully, this was somewhat encouraging. This incident occurred in the winter when I was 10. I was walking to the bus stop by myself when, out of nowhere, a red car drove past me and stopped. As I walked by it, a man yelled, hey kid. I turned and saw this guy in his early 20s. He motioned for me to come, but I stood still. He then said, I saw you coming out of 355 Terence Road. Was that man your dad? I had no idea how this person knew where I lived, and I got so creeped out that I ran. Glancing back, I was surprised to see that he wasn't following me, that night, I was finishing up some homework where I had to track the phases of the moon. I went to my window and was shocked to see that the same red car was parked across the street. I quickly ran to my parents, sobbing, and explained everything to them. I didn't say anything earlier out of fear of getting in trouble. My dad called the cops, and they arrested the man on the spot. My parents went outside to see what was going on, and the dumbstruck cop explained the bizarre story the man had told them, the guy was a rookie private investigator hired by a wife who suspected her husband of having an affair whenever he visited the city we lived in. The husband gave his wife our address and told her he was staying with a friend. When the police showed my parents the picture of the husband, they both laughed. The man didn't even look remotely like my dad. The only thing they had in common was their dark hair and light skin. The PI was sobbing in the cop car, and my dad didn't press charges because he felt bad. I'm not sure if I'm in the right place, but I've held this story in for the last six years because it sounds crazy, and I got told not to talk about it. I went camping six years ago with a now ex-boyfriend of mine. The campsite we picked was beautiful, we were able to drive in through some rough trails. 
The spot we picked was next to some hiking trails that weren't very far from some natural hot springs and a huge waterfall. We were in the middle of nowhere, absolutely no one was around. We set up camp next to the car, went hiking, soaked in the hot springs, came back, and had dinner. It was all very normal. Until we woke up the next day, I need to give some context as to how we slept that night so you can understand my confusion. Before we went to sleep, I put our food cooler and a stereo that we brought in the car and locked it. I put the keys in the front pocket of my backpack and put the backpack next to my sleeping bag on the far side of the tent away from the door of the tent. My boyfriend at the time slept nearest the door of the tent with a gun next to him. We woke up the next morning, and I felt fine, I had slept hard, and from inside the tent, everything seemed normal, when we got out, our campsite was absolute chaos. The fire pit we had made was ruined. The cooler had been thrown, and food was scattered all over the place. The stereo was smashed to pieces lying next to a tree. All of the car doors were open. Including the trunk. We stood there for a minute in silence, just taking everything in. The woods felt off now, it was quiet and not the beautiful campsite that I saw yesterday. Everything about those woods felt wrong now. My ex accused me of not locking the car the night before and that an animal got into our stuff. I promised that I had locked it and went into the tent to grab the keys from my backpack, but they weren't there. I found them later on the ground right next to the car. We quickly threw everything in the trunk and left. My boyfriend was quiet and wouldn't talk to me about what had just happened. He finally spoke up when we were almost home and told me that he had had a dream the night before about something kneeling over him in the tent holding his gun and just staring at him. When I tried to ask him more questions, he got quiet again and said he didn't want to talk about it and that I shouldn't talk about it anymore either. I've tried to forget about it, but I just can't. Something really wrong happened to us in the woods that night. So, I, 24M, have lived on my own for about two years now. I have a very small bungalow I'm able to pretty comfortably afford. In this bungalow, I have an attic area. At a guess, I'd say it's about 5 by 5 meters in size, and you can only really stand in there in the very center, anyway, I work the night shift at a factory, I basically just sit on my phone all night, so I usually get in at around 8 am. I was coming home last Thursday during a heavy storm, and I got into the house and just went to sleep, when I woke up, I went on my phone and saw that I was so tired that I didn't check my notifications. I have a ring camera outside my door, which shows me anyone who would have come to my room. I saw that it had been tripped at 7.42 am, I got into the house at around 8.10 to 15 am. I checked the video and saw that it was a man, he was pressed right up to the door and was fumbling around with the handle. He did this for about 10 seconds until he spotted the camera. Once he did, he very quickly scuttled away, this unsettled me but didn't entirely creep me out or anything. I got up to make some food and discovered something in my kitchen, my back window was open. I, of course, instantly began having thoughts of a home intruder but slowly chilled out as I convinced myself I had left it open. The rest of the day consisted of this, just noticing small things that didn't seem right and scaring myself. All up until a point, I leave for the shift at 10 pm, and I was watching some TV at around 9 o'clock, I spotted something that made my heart leap into my throat. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see it, my attic entrance was slowly being slid open. I can so vividly remember that I began questioning my sanity. Surely I was just hallucinating or something. I looked over at it and absolutely saw something that made me much more scared, I saw fingers wrap around the hatch and begin moving it more. I didn't know what to do, I could feel the panic beginning to really get to me, and I wasn't sure if I should leave the house and call the police or if I should try and yell at whoever was up there. I chose a mixture of both. I began dialing 999 and ran to my bedroom where I could lock the door. As soon as I began running, I heard the hatch get almost torn off with the speed they moved it, and I arrived at my bedroom door, I looked down the corridor and watched for a second, seeing only a little slice of the blackness up in my attic, 
and I saw the human hands still holding onto the sides of my ceiling. I yelled, whoever is there, I am calling the police and I have a gun, I do not own a gun, if you take a step out of there I will fucking shoot you. The adrenaline was really making my hands and voice shake, but I tried sounding as tough as I could. Then I saw something that I truly do not think I will ever forget, the hands slipped back into the dark, and then he dropped down, I slammed my door shut and locked it as quickly as I could. The call went through, and I was able to get on a line with the police, and they dispatched officers to my house. I told them I didn't know if the man was armed or not, and the dispatcher told me to stay on the line, I heard the man walking up to my door and rattling the door handle, he also seemingly went through my cupboards in my kitchen as I heard a lot of commotion there. Truth be told. I don't know why he stayed, would have just left the house, but he stayed right up until the police came in and arrested him. Apparently, he was a homeless man and was armed with a knife from my kitchen and had recently been seen in the area trying to get into other houses. Truth be told, I'm very frightened to sleep still. I now sleep with my bedroom door locked and all my windows closed. I also sleep with a knife under my pillow. I know that this is unlikely to ever happen again, but I just cannot forget the way he dropped down from my attic, so that's the story of the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I made this account to tell it because I feel like if I write it down like this, it will feel less like a real thing and more like just a story. I used to deliver pizzas when in college. One day, I delivered an order to a house, and when the guy opened the door, he said, honey, the pizza is here. However, the house was conspicuously empty, no furniture, no rugs, literally nothing but the floor and walls. It was a massive place and appeared to be abandoned, with complete silence prevailing, the guy invited me to come in while he went to get his wallet. He directed me to stand in a very specific spot, emphasizing, don't move. After locking the door, he walked to another room to get his wallet, periodically looking back at me. I waited for about 10 minutes, but nothing happened. Curiosity overcoming me, I cautiously walked towards the corner where the guy had gone. As I approached a door, I overheard the guy talking about me, physically describing me and repeatedly saying, it'll be easy. That's when I decided to bolt. I quickly found the back door, hopped the fence, and quit my job that day. I never delivered anything again. I don't know if this is the right forum to post, but it's a funny story. It was after September 11th in the USA, and airline staff were understandably paranoid. I was flying to California for a friend's wedding after just having been dumped by my cheating fiancé. I was so depressed about the breakup, and attending this wedding was salt in the wound. I wanted to cry during the flight, okay, did cry, and thought I'd have a drink to calm my nerves, I pressed the little flight attendant button and asked for a screwdriver. The attendant looked nervous and stated he would have to ask the captain if that was okay. I was young at that time and didn't drink much, so I thought it was odd, but whatever. He comes back and says, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I respond with, what? Why? You just served other passengers. He gets very nervous, starts to sweat, and asks me why I need one. I say, if you must know, I just got dumped by my boyfriend, and I need a drink, okay? He literally sighs a huge sigh of relief and says, OMG, I'm so sorry. I thought you were asking for the tool. I was about to call the air ranger on you. I died a little, then we laughed, and I got my drink. This incident occurred a couple of years ago when we used to live in a house in the mountains. The only neighbor we had wasn't very close to our home so there was literally no one around, this particular Sunday, my 13-year-old daughter came for the weekend, and she was sleeping upstairs, my bedroom is downstairs. I was in the living room, watching TV when I decided to go outside to contemplate the stars. The thing is, I had to leave my door semi-opened because there's only one handle, 
logically inside the house, and the other side of the door can only be opened with a key, so no handle from outside. I contemplated the stars for about five minutes, then I felt like I could smell a weird odor. I went back inside, it was 3 am, so I decided to go back to sleep, then I woke up at 6 am, and I could see the sunrise. So, I decided to open my window, since it was extremely hot inside, and stand up at the edge of the window, from outside. Suddenly, I felt like a hand was pushing me in my back. I got pushed from my window by someone. The thing is, there was only me and my daughter in my house, and I got pushed out of my own house by a stranger, and my daughter was still inside, since the window was closed, I couldn't open the front door either because I didn't have the keys. I knew that my neighbor was a locksmith, so I rushed to his house, woke him up at 6 am, and explained the situation to him. He took his stuff and came with me to my house. Now, I'll tell you what my daughter told me. She told me that she could hear an old man coughing and that she didn't recognize the cough, so she instantly went into the bathroom, locked the door of the bathroom, the door of her bedroom didn't have a lock, only the bathroom had, and she turned on the tap while she was calling the police. My neighbor managed to open the door, and we rushed upstairs. While going upstairs, I saw that a knife was missing from my knife set in the kitchen. We went upstairs, saw that the door of my daughter was open, turned on the lights, and saw an old man with a hood, holding one of my knives, waiting in front of the bathroom door. My neighbor and I beat the living shit out of him and waited until the police came. The man got arrested, and the week after that, we moved to another county. About five years ago, I was living at home with my parents, and my twin brother was there too. Every morning at about 7 am, we would both head out for a run. We had mapped out this giant loop that we would run. To make it a bit of a competition, I would run it in one direction, and my twin would run it in the other direction. That way, we could run and stay focused, part of this loop was on the main street of the city my parents live in. On this main road, there were these shady apartments, kind of hidden by a bunch of trees. In the direction I was running, the view of these apartments was obscured by a giant hedge bush, and I couldn't see the apartments until I was right in front of them. Out of my peripherals, I see a woman standing among the trees, staring at me. I immediately get the chills and do not turn to face her because I didn't want to be rude. So I run on and forget about this a few minutes later. I pass my twin about 10 minutes later, he's going in the opposite direction as I. I get home, and my twin isn't back yet, so I go about the rest of my morning routine, including taking a shower. I get out of the shower, and my twin hasn't come back yet, and I'm starting to get a bit worried. An hour after I had gotten home, he's still not back, and I call him. He tells me he's on his way back and he has something he needs to tell me and my parents, he finally gets home and tells us that as he's running in front of these apartments. He saw a woman hanging from the trees in front of this apartment. As soon as it's obvious he's seen her, a man comes sprinting from the apartments wailing and screaming, no. I can't believe she did this. And grabs her body and lays her on the ground and starts performing CPR. It's obvious he is her husband. My brother calls the local police and they dispatch an ambulance and police officers. My brother has to stay for questioning and a witness report and all that jazz. He is obviously troubled by it. Since he was going the opposite way that I was running, he didn't have a hedge obscuring his view and got a straight-on view of this woman hanging there. It's still hard for me to believe that the woman I saw staring at me out of my peripherals was dead the entire time, I do find it very sketchy that the husband came running out as soon as it was obvious that someone had discovered the body. That is a bit too convenient if you ask me. But I don't want to say this man killed his wife without any evidence. My brother is never followed up with by the police, leading me to believe the death was ruled a suicide. I just still can't fathom that if I would have turned to face this woman, would have discovered her about 20 minutes earlier than my twin had and it deeply troubles me that I didn't.